Now we're going to look at the tropical rainforest today, so we're going to start off looking at the basic characteristics and the climate data, just so you have a good understanding of tropical rainforests around the world. We're going to talk about biodiversity, and then we're also going to look at the Amazon rainforest in a bit more detail, and talk about some of the challenges and opportunities in the rainforests. To start with, we need to be familiar with where we can find tropical rainforests. Again, you need a good understanding, look at this ecosystems map. It's come up in several other units so far, so you should be able to read it carefully and make sure you're looking at the key. It's very common to see a map like this come up in exam papers, so you're gonna be able to identify the different areas and again, use the key. So tropical rainforests, we've got them in Central and South America, Central Africa, Southeast Asia, and Northern Australia. This is an example of the climate data from an house in Brazil. So we see very consistent temperatures throughout the year. We don't get extreme heat or extreme cold, but they stay around you know, just under 30 degrees throughout the entire year. This means we've got a very stable climate and this is perfect for growing. When we look at the precipitation or rainfall data, again, these, these highs of nearly 300 millimeters in March, and then lows in August, just under 50 millimeters. So again, we get a lot of rainfall majority of the year. We do have those lows in June, July, August, and September. The nutrient cycle works at a very fast rate in the rainforest due to the heat and humidity. So nutrients are taken up by the plants very quickly. Tropical rainforests have the highest level of biodiversity compared to all the other ecosystems in the world. No one knows how many different species there are in these areas, but they've estimated in between 3 and 50 million species. When we look at the characteristics of the tropical rainforest canopy, it's usually broken into four different areas. So we've got the emergent layer or top canopy, which is above 35 meters. You see very fast growing trees that are competing for sunlight. The canopy layer, or also known as the middle canopy, is between 20 to 35 meters. The understory layer, or lower tree canopy, is 10 to 20 meters. And the forest floor, or shrub layer, is 5 to 10 meters. And we see large buttresses to support tall trees and transport water. We're now going to look at the Amazon rainforest in Brazil as one of our case studies for rainforests. And before you go into this unit, you always need to think about the costs versus the benefits. This is a big question that I see very regularly and in a lot of discussions in class we talk about. So what are the costs? When we talk about costs, we're talking about environmental damage, damages to the ecosystem or damages to the world climate. When we talk about benefits, we're talking about developing jobs, developing areas, and improving the quality of life for the residents of that country. It's, it's a very common question. Again, can you balance out an argument to say, are these development opportunities worth it compared to the damage to the environment? When revising tropical rainforest, you can break it down into four different sections. We've got the values of the rainforest, again, what it can contribute and what resources are there. We've got causes of deforestation, the impacts of deforestation, and then how we can sustainably manage the rainforest. Starting off looking at the values and what the rainforest offers us. The first thing that springs to mind with most pupils is we talk about goods. So foods, timber from the trees, providing energy through a hydroelectric power, but also providing medicines from all the plants. It also offers essential services such as air purification, water and nutrient cycling, wildlife habitats and biodiversity, as well as offering employment. There are several different main causes of deforestation in tropical rainforests. Logging is used to clear very large areas for the timber industry, but also then clearing areas for other activities. Mineral extraction is seen in tropical rainforests where they're often mining for gold and bauxite, which is used in the production of aluminium. But often these areas can be damaged and polluted. We also see lots of energy development in the area, such as hydroelectric power plants. Now these are great for providing sustainable energy for the area, but they also have a big cost to the environment. They flood large areas, which then cause lots of pollution and the wood rots. 
The illegal wildlife trade also contributes to the overall deforestation in the area as more people gain access. Farming has seen large areas cleared for cattle and crops, and in the past, there's been lots of inefficient farming methods used, which have again caused greater deforestation. When we look at the impacts, we can break it down into global impacts as well as local impacts. When we talk about the global impacts of deforestation, it will affect the global climate and massively affect the loss of biodiversity. By reducing the amount of trees in the tropical rainforest, this will have a massive effect on climate change, as there are a lot less trees to process the carbon dioxide into oxygen. When trees are cleared, it will massively affect the soil, as there aren't any strong roots to compact and keep the soil together, we see soil erosion. So in when there is extreme weather and lots of rain, the nutrients and the top layer of soil will be washed away. We also see lots of river pollution from mining and soil erosion, and this will be washed into local rivers and water supplies. The last impact we see is the decline of local tribes. And these people are being forced out of the areas they've occupied for hundreds and thousands of years. The last factor we look at with tropical rainforests is how can we sustainably manage these areas? We can break this down into international, national and local management. On an international level, governments can work together to try and reduce the effects of deforestation. International hardwood agreements ensure governments don't buy illegally felled wood. This understanding creates a stronger relationship between companies and encourages countries to buy legally sourced wood. By helping to reduce the debt of a country, this will enable people to earn money in legitimate ways. People often turn to illegal logging and illegal trade when they don't have any other options. So by reducing the debt, allowing governments to spend essential money on essential services such as healthcare and education, this will increase the employment in the country. Non-governmental organisations really help with the conservation of areas and education. NGOs like the WWF contribute to um, schemes and projects to try and conserve areas while also educating people on how they can look after the rainforest uh, in the local areas but also educating the global community on how they can help with this issue. On a national level we see governments trying to protect the areas and creating reserves or national parks. They are also trying to reduce the impact from developers but again, in the past, it's been very hard for governments to keep an eye on what's actually happening and monitoring the situation. On a local level, we can really think about how we actually manage the area. Selective logging only selects mature trees before cutting them down, and it's monitored how often they chop trees down in an area. Agroforestry sees a combination of agriculture and forestry, trying to sustain the rainforest and the trees while also using the area for agriculture such as uh, crops and farmland. We can also see the replanting of trees in these areas. That's just a brief outline of everything you need to know for the tropical rainforest. This is definitely something I recommend you go and looking up and I've included some links in the description if you want to find out more. Thanks for watching, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give this video a like and that will help us out. Next week I'll be looking at cold environments.